Honestly, I don't know how to do the intro for this video, so I would say, let's just get started without wasting time because frankly I don't know how to begin. Now on this channel, I've uploaded several videos where I've shown you how these modules work, of the LPMs and in general about the goal of this product itself, but I still want to go ahead. A little introduction to the project and the startup in general. The startup is called Objects Labs. We mainly focus on hardware development for IoT devices, and in particular our flagship product is this, the LPM. LPM stands for Extreme Low Power Module. They are modules similar to other ones available on the market, like the standard ESP32, but there are many others from many other companies. This module was specifically created to develop IoT devices that are optimized in terms of energy efficiency and also in terms of protocols. In fact, these modules, especially the ones we produce, support several protocols to ensure that the IoT device we will build around them has maximum integration with other external devices. The main problem with IoT is the type of protocol you choose to use for interacting with other nodes with other devices. So these LPMs are created specifically to make development easier for developers, to companies and not just them, actually also to students, anyone who wants to somehow develop their own smart device. And these modules are perfect for that because you just need to connect the sensors in some way. And basically, you already have a smart device in hand that is optimized both in terms of energy efficiency and protocols. And also, in terms of form factor, because as you can see, it's an extremely compact solution that obviously allows for the development of very compact battery powered devices. Now, before we move on to the topic of this video, I want to take a moment. I want to show you the modules that are available on the market, meaning to achieve the same compatibility in terms of protocols. So if we want to develop, for example, an IoT device that needs to have more or less the same compatibility in terms of protocols. Like this module, you need to use two separate modules like these here to achieve the same number of protocols. So how do you notice this module that we developed? So, the LPM is definitely more compact compared to these other two solutions already available on the market that are currently being used. And you understand well that having a more compact and more energy efficient solution, it's definitely more interesting than using two modules, which obviously come from two different brands and can be subject to shortages. So the LPMs are the heart of IoT devices. In this video, we won't look at the other variants because there are even smaller variants, but we will mainly focus on how to produce these modules, how to manage production. Later, we will also look at the certifications. For now, I would like to focus only on production. I know that someone might say, why not have these modules produced directly by specialized companies like PCBWay? Absolutely, yes, you're right, if you thought about that. But what's the idea that we want to manage part of the production internally, especially for the first test batches? So we want to verify that the design is reliable. And then, if necessary, we will outsource mass production to PCBWay. Now, producing LPMs is extremely complicated. Simply put, guys, for this reason, look at the size of the components. Here, with this goal, I can't even focus for a moment. The components, but they are all the components. A2, A1, so smaller, smaller than a millimeter, many of them, especially the passives, the resistors, the capacitors, the inductors. So you understand that assembling by hand can be done, but only two or three pieces, and it takes a lot of time. The alternative, the only alternative really, is to use a pick and place machine. So a machine that automatically positions these components, and that's exactly what we'll do. I mean, I'll show you the result I got after several hours of calibration, so I won't show you the entire process, but I want you to understand how complicated it is and especially how miniaturized the design is. What I'm showing you. What you see now is a non-functioning LPM because I did some tests, but as you can see, you can still see some soldered components like capacitors and resistors and they are extremely small. So you can indeed understand that testing this module is really extremely complex. Before we continue, I absolutely have to thank PCBWay, who supported the development of this project, not just for the LPMs, but for all the projects you've seen on the channel. So if you're looking for a reliable printed circuit board manufacturer for your project, I recommend PCBWay. Also, I want to remind you that PCBWay, in addition to managing the production of printed circuit boards, can handle other types of processing, like CNC machining or 3D printing and much more. You'll find the link below in the description to place your first order. Thanks again to PCBWay for supporting this project and now let's get back to the video. The production line is mainly made up of three elements. The first is the stencil machine, where the solder paste is applied to the printed circuit boards. So then, we can solder the components on the printed circuit boards. Next is the pick and place machine, which is a neodin. And this machine is specifically used to place the components. And finally, we have the industrial oven, which is used specifically for soldering. 
Our boards. It's obvious that between one station and another. So, between the stencing machine and the pick and place machine, and between the pick and place machine and the oven, I always do visual inspections with a digital microscope. Just to see if the components have been placed correctly, if they have been soldered properly. And of course, also at the beginning, especially to see if the solder paste has been applied correctly on all the pads. For me, this production line is a huge step forward considering how I started. And yes, it took me a full five years to get to this point. Okay, quick clip regarding the stencil machine. So I encountered some problems, that's to be expected. Initially I made some mistakes with the calibration. Calibrating this machine isn't complicated, but it's not simple either. You need to gain experience with it. Now let's say I found the setup perfect. As you can see here, there's the stencil with the frame, obviously provided by BCB Way. The quality is excellent. Forget about that, it's a messed up panel because as you can see, it's missing some parts. So basically it positions itself on these four anchoring points. The panel, the stencil lowers and the solder paste is applied. This phase works. I didn't encounter any particular problems, but now there's an error regarding the components. 0201 pad 0201 stencil smaller than pad 0402 resistor. The pad 0201 is significantly smaller than the pad size. In itself, if you look at the 0402 component, which is a resistor, the stencil opening is identical to the size of the pad, unlike for the 0201 components. Testing designs on a small scale before mass production is very useful. It helps identify errors not visible on CADI because it allows you to go and identify a series of errors that on CAD you cannot see these imperfections of the design. Why test is key. Okay, the panel is soldered, and frankly, I'm very satisfied. Is that true? The pick and place machine made a mistake in placing some components, mainly resistors and capacitors. A0201, because with larger components, it generally doesn't make mistakes after properly calibrating. I'm satisfied. I confess that this is actually the second panel. I've tested, and I've improved some things regarding the soldering. Basically, the PK press machine also made a mistake in placing an RTC for a moment. This was on the corner, but I fixed it later. I'm definitely faster with the PK press machine. In assembling a panel, keep in mind that it used to take us about 1, 10 hours. Because, as I said, they are components 0201, a panel made up of about 557 components. And many of these are resistors and capacitors. So, placing them one by one and uh, making sure that they are all well secured to the PCB or at least properly positioned is complicated. Firmly attached to the PCB or in any case, it's complicated to get them well positioned. It's very complicated and so this machine, the Neoden, is definitely helping me a lot as for everything else. So the oven and the stencil machine are currently working properly. I calibrated them successfully, so now I have to test all these units manually by hand. Then, in a future video, we'll see how to automate this process. But yes, we're there. One step forward for the LPM project. The most difficult part of producing these modules, in fact, isn't the assembly, but the testing. Because, unlike other boards or other types of products that always use larger components, where you can even see soldering errors with the naked eye, here we have some components which are extremely small. So, just a slightly misplaced resistor or capacitor and the design doesn't work. I just want to show you these for a moment. These are modules that I disassembled because they had some issues. The components are extremely small. Now, finding errors in here is really complicated. These, in actual fact, are indeed the 17 modules you saw earlier, which have all been soldered, as you can see, with the tested shields to test them. Currently, I use this gadget here that I developed a little. These are flex pins where you can insert the module in this position. So you insert the module like this into the socket. And then, through this Silal bridge, I can perform all the necessary checks to do manual tests on these modules. It takes me about 20 minutes per module, so I need to automate this process.
Now, we're going to do it. In the next videos, I will show you our progress in testing. Testing is complex with many tests involved. The universal test board for testing these modules and also other products that we are rolling out. You understand well that the testing phase is really complicated because there are so many things to test in a module like this. The GPO check if the soldering has been done correctly. We need to check the entire radio section, verify the whole power part, so all the individual LDOs, the power latch, the RTC. We are going to test everything to ensure the highest possible quality standard for the product. You can understand that this part here absolutely needs to be automated because right now it acts as a bottleneck. Everything else constantly acts as a bottleneck because even though we have managed to automate, let's say, the first part related to the production of the LPM, and not just that. Now we need to resolve the entire final production part before packaging, which is the testing phase. And to do this, we have developed a testing machine, which is what you see on the screen. We have already finalized the design. It's based on a CM4, so through a Raspberry, at least for now. The idea is to automate all these tests. So, simply put, the LPM is inserted into the socket and all the tests are automatically executed instead of me manually loading the firmware every time. I mean, that's what I'm doing right now. I know, it's crazy, but I had to solve other problems. I had to prioritize other things, but now it's time to automate. This part here is absolutely essential for being able to produce hundreds of modules every week. Objects. Please also visit objectslabs.com.